Configuration, Understanding Outbound Load Balancing. By the time you're done here, you will understand the principles of balancing outbound traffic across BGP carriers. And I actually had to tweak this you will statement a few times because the situation that we're running into is a little bit unique, but very relevant. As you know, this is a real world BGP series, and in the real world, everything doesn't always work as crisp and pretty as it is in a configuration guide. In the quote unquote perfect world, you have a BGP configuration with two routers, and those routers are connected to two carriers. Redundant connection, equal bandwidth between both of them. Carrier one and carrier two give you the option of receiving the full BGP table, a partial BGP table, or just a default route. Regardless of which one you choose, all those routes will come streaming into your routing table and over your perfect environment, equal cost path routes, Load balancing just happens. I mean, imagine you chose default route only. You now have an equal cost default route from carrier one and carrier two. And most routers will start doing either per conversation or per packet load balancing automatically. Clap your hands together, done. But you and I both know that we don't live in the perfect world. We live in the real world. <laughs> Let me describe that world to you. In our current configuration, we have a single static route outbound on both of these routers. That's the default route. And that means by default, all traffic goes out the IO blend connection. It's currently a hundred megabit per second committed circuit that is burstable up to one gig. If you haven't heard that terminology before, essentially that means we pay for hundred megabits per second every month, but we can actually use up to a thousand and we are billed accordingly. Now we have exactly the same circuit through level three and through Cogent, 100 megabits per second, burstable to 1,000. Now you might be wondering, well, if your default route is pointing out here, are you even using these circuits? Or are they just sitting there idle? And that's my point exactly. We're in the real world where things aren't quite as pretty. Here's what we did. On this router, which currently hosts the level three connection, we set up policy routing. What we said is if there's any addresses that are in that 63.232.144 subnet to send it this way, override the default route that we have going out the IO blend, everything else use the default. Now you might be wondering, why did you do that, Jeremy? Well, truth be told, we actually have a number of other subnets besides this one. That's our largest public block, but we actually have IP addresses that IO data has given us and IP addresses IO data has given us. We actually have other IP addresses IO data has given us. My inflection was wrong and I didn't have a list of things. So I just wanted to make it sound like a list. So since we have these other blocks and they are smaller blocks, they're like slash 27 slash 28 blocks that we used as we grew, we decided, well, let's just send all of those out the default and specifically match these guys and any other blocks that we've received from level three, because we have a few others. And we'll send those out this way. Hey, I want to take you back to the blank whiteboard because I want to make sure you guys understand the big picture. These are my outside BGP routers and they connect to a network back here that comprises my inside customer routers. Now, most of those belong to VIA, my company, but there's other customers here too. Now we've got all of those subnets coming in from the multiple carriers that we've got connected, right? One of them being a slash 24, some of them being slash 28s or 29s. All of them terminate right here and are then subnetted and handed to the customers back here. So for example, I might take that 63.232.144.0 and break it into a, let's just say a slash 28, a block of 16 addresses and allocate it down here to router one. What that means is I'll create a VLAN between these routers and this guy. Let's just call it VLAN 22. It'll use the IP addresses 63.232. 144.0 through 15. That's what a slash 28 block would be. Now what I'm doing right here is using VRRP to provide redundancy for this router. So maybe in this VLAN 22, this router's the dot two, this router's the dot three, and I create a virtual dot one IP address that works in an active passive failover. This guy will be active, this guy will be passive. This customer down here can use dot four through dot 15 for whatever purposes they want. Well, I guess technically you would say dot 14 because of the broadcast. So maybe they'd assign their router the dot four and then use NAT translations for dot five, dot six, dot seven, et cetera, et cetera, for all of the, the servers that they're hosting behind that firewall. Is that all making sense? 
Now, because VRRP is an active-passive relationship, when this router or all the servers behind it that are using NAT translations in this address block try to go out, this one will respond to the .1 IP address unless it's down. So let's just imagine this server, which maps to 63.232.144.5, decides to access the internet. It goes out from whatever private IP address it has, gets translated. Then this guy goes, okay, my default route says to go to .1, the VRRP address. This guy responds, and now we've got a packet from the source, 63.232.144.5, going to the destination, let's just say 8.8.8.8. He decided to ping Google's DNS server. It now hits this router. It's looking at its routing table. And this is what I was trying to explain a moment ago. We've got a default route that says, by default, everything goes to that IO blend. But we have policy routing set up that says if it's coming from the full address block, so slash 24, anything in that range, automatically route out the level three connection. So this server right here would come up, hit the policy route and go that away. If this router was down, VRRP would kick in and the dot one would be handled by router two. This guy would come up and go out this way, which would connect to Cogent. Again, same default route sitting on router two, same policy route saying if it comes from the CenturyLink block or level three block, route it out Cogent. And since I have the BGP relationship already established with Cogent, Cogent will recognize that and work just fine. I wanna pull up my monitoring system because I think when you see this, it's gonna explain a lot. You can see right here is uh, our monitoring for the Brocade Public Edge. That's the BGP routers that we're configuring. Uh, this is one, right down below it is number two. Now, you can see that I've got you know a few connections being monitored, the core switch connection, the connection to Iron Mountain, IO data, et cetera, et cetera. The one that I'm focusing on right here is the CenturyLink traffic. Let me pull up the live graph. So let me just grab my pen so you can see. Here's our router one that's connected right here to CenturyLink and currently right now connected to IO data or Iron Mountain and all the customers inside back here. That's connection through the core switch. Now let me take a couple of these things off. I'm gonna take off the traffic total and let's just look at the traffic in. When I'm saying in, I'm representing traffic coming into this router from the internet or technically CenturyLink. And as you can see here, you know, around 540 in the morning, we're hitting about oh, four or five megabits per second, you know, around uh, 610, we're hitting 50, two-ish megabits per second. I mean, you can, you can kind of line it up over here with the speed being consumed of traffic coming in. That's not what we're talking about in this nugget. That'll be the next nugget. What I'm talking about is the traffic out, outbound load balancing. So traffic out is the stuff that's being sent from all these servers and everything else that's sitting behind the routers. And you can see that around 640, it peaked up around 30 megabits per second. You know, getting close to where I am right now about, you know, 14 megabits per second, you, you, you get the feel for what's going on on the traffic going out of the router. I'm gonna clear that off and let's look at the router two. Now remember over on router two, I don't have a connection to CenturyLink, it's not redundant. I just have a connection to Cogent. Look at what we see. Deselecting a few of these. Traffic in looks about right. This is the traffic in going to those 63232 addresses. You know, stuff's happening. 5.25 in the morning, we hit about 16 megabits per second. 7.15, we're shooting up to about 36 megabits, 37 megabits per second or so. But let's look at the traffic out. That, my friends, is nothing. You're like, well, wait, there's a line. Yep, 0.4 kilobits per second is actually going out. So maybe that's a, a little BGP keep alive every now and then. A little hello going on, something like that. Now, my question for you, coming back to this image that I drew just a moment ago, we saw that we had a lot of traffic going out and a lot of traffic coming in over here. On this side, on the Cogent side, we saw a decent amount of traffic coming in and we saw absolutely nothing going out. Why is that? VRRP is an active passive system. Think about it. All of these guys, when they go out, are going to go to the active router to determine their outbound routing. Now, if I had Cisco devices and use something like GLBP, which is VRRP with load balancing, jumping back and forth, then we would see some utilization going out this way. But as it stands right now, the active router takes all of the outbound traffic where the passive router will sit there and just wait for something to die, namely router one. At that point, it takes over that active role and routes all the outbound. So you can see that when you're thinking about outbound load balancing, 
it is 100% up to you. Now, let me show you what's gonna happen by time it's said and done. Right now I have the BGP relationship between level three in our router and the BGP relationship between Cogent in our router. Once I set up the BGP relationship, with IO data, which is actually happening tonight at a good 10.30 p.m. I'm gonna have to go to the data center. I might grab my GoPro camera and come along, but I might get arrested doing that or kicked out of the data center. So I'll have to see if they'll let me. But once I bring up that relationship, then I can use the default route coming from both carriers to do some load balancing between level three and IO and between Cogent and IO. That's the benefit of having that redundant connection coming into both routers. So to wrap up this nugget, because I'm not gonna implement this until we have that IO blend connection on BGP, here's my plan. First off, create and apply a route map for the IO blend subnets and the Misfit CenturyLink address blocks. What I mean is like I mentioned at the beginning of this nugget, this is only one of the blocks that we have coming in. It's the largest one, but we have a bunch of little slash 28s, 29s, and all that kind of stuff that have been given to us by the different carriers. So instead of doing policy routing to send the CenturyLink addresses that way and using a default route for everything else, I wanna remove that, that's this step right here, remove the CenturyLink policy routing and allow the default route to rule that connection. So we'll have default routes going for level three and for the IO blend, let that all happen and use policy routing for all the misfit subnets and force those to go out the IO blend because these guys wouldn't recognize them. Does that make sense? Again, it's not as pretty as the textbook BGP because in that world, everything goes across BGP. But the fact is you can't advertise those tiny subnets using BGP because they'll be filtered out. You got to have at least a slash 24 or bigger address block to go BGP. Whew, I know a little mind bending, right? But I promise the truth in this nugget. I can only give you the truth. It's not as pretty as everything being equal cost, everything being advertised with BGP. But walking away, you should now understand the principles of balancing outbound traffic across carriers.